Hello, hello, hello. How's everyone doing today? How is everyone doing today? There we go, I can see. I can see. I can sing. No, I can't. How's everyone doing today? It's it's Tuesday. And uh, we have some, what are we doing today? Leviathan and Nighthawk shenanigans to get going to. So how is everyone doing? I hope you weren't, your night wasn't like mine where you're up at one in the morning replacing a broken thermistor. That's always fun. <laughs> Especially when the printer lives under a bench now. Um, getting prints going, that's cool. I reprinted all the chest parts. Um, for my Helldiver suit. I'm starting to get working on it, on the, the body armor part of the Helldiver suit. I also have the Zinc printed uh, for the Nerf Blaster build, but obviously we're not gonna be playing with this on stream because that's a Nerf prop. It's a Nerf Blaster, sure it shoots foam darts, but after shenanigans with YouTube, that won't be built on a live stream. That will be um, a video. <laughs> but uh, yeah, remember how I say the fastest printer is more printer? Um, all this, all these parts, including a massive front and rear chest piece. Yeah, these were all printed last night. <laughs> Remember, it doesn't matter how fast your printer is, it will always be beaten, beaten by more printer. So. Uh, mail out the hell diver. Awesome. Thank you, bro. Yeah. Um, I had to rescale it. I'm... Well, height-wise, I'm 95%. Chest-wise, I'm 100%. Um, cracked heat block on my fatest dragonfly. Yeah, I had the, uh, on the, the Goliath, the, um, I was printing, and then I got a thermal runaway issue, and I'm like, why do I have a thermal runaway issue? And I'm like, oh, that should be in there. So, luckily, I had a spare one. And by a spare one, I mean I had a whole other Goliath that I just stole the thermistor from. So, now I have a Goliath without a thermistor. Um. So yeah, uh, the optimal number printer is M plus one. Yes, one is done, two is one, and one is none because the all it's always better to have more printer. Always better to have more printer. Um, Wi-Fi hot it exactly. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. Don't forget the overlays. Ah, good point. Turn the overlays back on. Overlays, overlay, desktop. Overlay. There we go. We had a member stream on Sunday there, and I have to turn the overlays off. Um, so, yeah. So, today, we've got these guys. What are they? LDO Nighthawk and LDO Leviathan. So, on uh, Saturday there, we tore apart our uh, Trident. We took all the electronics out of it because it is, it is, it is broken. It. So, we're going to upgrade it. So, we got a Nighthawk tool head board. And then we also have a Leviathan. So we uh, we ripped the Fizek spider out and the whole umbilical, and now we're putting in um, a tool head board and a new controller. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Ba -ba. Sounds like a printer salesman. Don't, don't, don't. Don't mix me up with the people who do that. Ugh. I'm a horrible salesman. I don't sell anything. Um, so unfortunately I kind of goofed and I have everything just kind of here. So let me give my brain a second here while I figure out how to get all this out without knocking all my stuff over. There we go. Uh, he's the ideal target audience though. I am? I don't know. I mean, if I, if I was the ideal target market, uh, companies would be paying me to post ads for them on Twitter right now. Like some companies. <laughs> I can't believe they're actually doing that. I thought we were past that point, but alas, poor York, we are not. So, I love bad precedents. I love bad pre. Oh wait, no, I don't like that precedent. I do not like that pre precedent. The Trident. Okay, I'm going to take my mat off. This is probably not going to be a good idea. Let me let me get the mat off here. There we go. Um, and I think my overlay is bugged again. 
Is the overlay bugged? Meh. Overlay is bugged. Uh, can I run Clipper on a Pi Zero W? Uh, yes. Although, uh, if it's just a Pi Zero W, uh, duh, you can't run a webcam. You won't be able to really run a webcam. A Pi Zero 2, you will be able to. Um, do, do, do. Watching your stream while streaming yours. Oh, cool. I'm a copyright strike. You know I want. That would be rude. Uh, you see Saval's lovely post about an SVO8. They had people posting. Yeah, I think it was... I want to give him the benefit of the doubt and, and say it was a translation thing. Um, because... Uh, there are certain marketing behaviors that are acceptable in some regions and cultures that don't fly over here. And I think a lot of it gets lost in translation and also the 12 hour time delay um, doesn't really help them in their case. But in certain markets, basically that kind of shit just is the norm. Everyone does it. it, it it's kind of like how Bamboo is actively paying content creators right now on Twitter to post ads for their printer. Like that, that kind of thing is the norm in certain places, but like, it, I, I find it really weird. So it, it, it's just the thing. So I, I don't know. I have an SV08, by the way. I've got the SV08. I've got it in a box right over there. Um, we will be unboxing it on a live stream tomorrow or correction Tuesday, because that's the embargo date. So if you see anyone post anything before August 9th or correction, August 9th, uh, April 9th, they're breaking the embargo. So just so you're aware. <laughs> So if you see anyone trying to jump that gun to get that uh, that primo content creator spot of being the first, um, next Tuesday is when I'm allowed to do content on it. So uh, I'm not familiar with the drama. Eh, it's not really drama. I'm just something I'm surprised that is actually a thing. I'm not too happy about it, but it is what it is. A one gigabyte CM4 will run Clipper with... Yes. If, if a Pi Zero 2 can run Clipper with a webcam, and that has, like, what, 256 or 512, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Yeah, I, I I don't know. I run... Half my machines run Clipper on a Pi 3B, which is, like, what, 10 years old now? Like, you, you don't need... A, you don't even need a Pi 4, unless you're running, like, a crazy high-resolution webcam. Um... I mean, the, the Creality K1C gets by with 200 megs of RAM and, and uh, a, dual core, a dual core. So I think people are really over thinking how much computational power they need for Clipper. <laughs> Basically, it, it, if you don't even care about a webcam, you can do it on a Pi Zero. You can do it on a Pi Zero. Okay, um, so we are doing this. I'm gonna have to figure out how to get a camera angle for this. This is gonna be annoying. Hopefully my webcam actually works. So the plan today is, uh, first things first, you're gonna go to the video description, okay? Because in the video description, hello? Uh, there is a link to a contest. Hello? Ah. Uh, because every stream we give away a spool of filament from Polymaker. So if you wanna win that spool of filament from Polymaker, enter for your chance, link in the video description. Go do that now. This might work, because I'm gonna have to turn this around so I can see what I'm doing. Because um, we need to put some stuff in here. So let's, you gotta go over here. So we'll start with the Nighthawk. So we have all these wires here. I'm gonna have to do a bunch of crimping and stripping and shortening of stuff, which is gonna kind of suck. So that's gonna be the first thing we're gonna to have to do is, oh, this camera's gonna get annoying quick. How's this one work? Does that one work? Can I just, can I use this, zoom out? Can I, I mean, we can use this, we can use that, that'll work. You've seen me strip wires before. <laughs> okay, so, Nice looking machine. Thank you. This is like two years old, too. Do it for sure. I don't know. I you, Like, you can't just, just buy a Pi. You'll be fine. If it's a Pi 4, you're good. <laughs> you don't really need a crazy amount of power to run Clipper. 
You only need the crazy power if you're running like Clipper and a bunch of other stuff. So if, if you're making time lapses with a 1080p webcam at a high frame rate, then yeah, the, the more you start doing, the more, you know, power you're gonna need. Um, but if you if it's just you know you're running it on an Ender with like a C920 webcam, you're 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 pretty much golden. It's not a huge deal. Uh, standard for tool head connectors and stuff with fans. Um, Microfit 3 seems to be the kind of go-to on the DIY scene. The problem is companies are going to put whatever they can get cheap and a lot of, and that's kind of the problem. So any content creators don't use a head-mounted cam for bits like this. Um, several reasons. One, I move a lot. Uh, two, it would need to be a Wi-Fi camera. Three, I stream for three hours. So it would need to be a Wi-Fi camera with a three-hour battery that has built-in image stabilization. Um, yeah, good, yeah. If you got a, oh, and it's cheap, because I'm not gonna drop, you know, several hundred dollars on a, on um, uh, a Mevo or whatever example. Um, so yeah, so find me a webcam that could do 1080p streaming, 60 FPS, uh, high fidelity, built-in image stabilization, a not blurry image, great autofocus, and I can wear it on my head for three hours without running into an issue. Um, yeah. So. That's kind of a problem. Did I have a boat and tube in here? Okay, I did have a boat and tube in there. That's good. Okay, so first things first is uh, we need to, so this has an XG hot end in it actually. I completely forgot it has an XG hot end. Uh, we need to put a fan shroud uh, thing in there. Battery, power battery. Yeah, if I'm wearing a head cam, I'm not gonna be tethered. Like I, I'm not gonna wear a head cam that I'm also tethered. So if you're gonna, if I'm gonna wear a camera on my head, it's got to be wireless. So it's got to be battery powered, and it's got to be able to stream high quality video. Um, so that right there limits all your options. Okay, so the first thing we're installing here is as part of this, and if you if you want to build one of these yourself, um, I have a link in the description that goes to the LDL reseller uh, list, um, MetaQuest. No, I have a Rift. I have a I have a Rift, uh, an Oculus Rift S. I think it is. Um, so yeah. So the first thing we need to do is install this board in here. So this takes over for the fans. So this will plug uh, both the fans into here. We don't have any LEDs in this. Uh, so this will be the fans. So then going forward, when we take the fans on and off, we don't have to deal with this anymore, right? So this this will be a nice little pogo connector. Um, so when you take the fan, fan shred out, the fans come with it. So that is the first thing we're gonna do. If I can find my screwdriver that I use for this, that I probably misplaced. Where did I misplace you? Did I put you over here? I did, here you are. Duct tape a GoPro, yeah. The problem is the GoPros, I, I have a GoPro. I got a GoPro Hero 10. Um, they're, they're, I don't like them. <laughs> the, the image quality isn't great. The battery is not great on them when you're streaming. Um, and then I would have to stream it to an RTMP server that I pull the feed from. It's a pain in the butt. Like there is a reason if you look at like the streaming backpacks, there is a reason people still use the Sony A3000 line of action cameras for um, that kind of stuff versus a GoPro. Like there's a reason. <laughs> okay, so these screws over here, I'm gonna need them later. So let's find my screws for this. There we go. M310s and M38s. So iPhone can be used. Yeah, cool. I don't got an iPhone. And also, I'm not walk. I'm not gonna tape a camera or a phone to my head. 
Like, I'm not going to walk around with a phone on my head. And any camera, if I put a camera on my head, it's got to be compact enough that I don't even know it's there. So that pretty much rules out all of them. Google Glass. Actually, Google Glass would be great. I would love a set of Google Glass just so that I can actually um, um, see. So I can see chat without having to actually look at the screen. Like, you know, what, what Zach has, Zach Freeman. He's got his little, uh, his little eyepiece monocle thing. I basically want that, but not as expensive because those things are actually kind of expensive to make, unfortunately. Um, okay, so part cooling fan is this one. So, short this one, do a little crimp it and strip it. Insta 360. The problem is a lot of those don't have great up close autofocus. Even the GoPro struggles and the GoPro struggles in low light. So basically you don't want to wear, well, no, well, duh. Do you want to wear a camera on your head all day? Um, I am uh, keeping a lookout though. Right now, the overhead camera that I got right now is a Canon Vixia. I don't like this as an overhead camera. Um, one, the, the colors are garbage. Um, and two, it, it doesn't zoom out as much as I'd like. Um, so I actually, I do wanna replace this camera and then this will be my mobile camera because this actually runs on battery for quite a bit. I can plug it in. I've got long HDMI cables. That would make a great mobile camera. Um, so the plan is I want to make that a mobile camera, uh, but I need to replace it first with something. And I'm kind of looking for that right now. Okay, so I need, what kind of connector? Oh, this uses like the baby connectors. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Are you gonna do with HD2 armor, the wrist pad and bed a phone in it? Um, I might be doing, um, you, you just get like a little Arduino and it's a little touch screen and you just make a little rhythm game. Or something. Uh, understand for a cocktail. Gym. What? I have no idea what you're talking about. Also, if you're talking about April Fool stuff, I like didn't watch anything. And I don't even know if I'm gonna do my video because I'm I'm I've got it mostly filmed. Um, an April Fool's video that. I'll, I'll probably still finish it anyways, because otherwise I don't have a video for this week. Um, but I do have a April Fool's video for Thursday. That isn't an April Fool's video, but it is an April Fool's video. Am I going to open sauce? If I can get an invite, yes. Or I can find somebody to sponsor it. Because it's uh, open sauce is expensive. It's in an expensive area and it's on the other side. It's in a, expensive flights, expensive hotels in an expensive area. Um, so unless I get an invite or a company wants to sponsor my entire shebang, I won't be going, unfortunately. So there's a chance I would love to go. I would love to go. I've been watching a lot of the people like, I don't know, I've been watching William Osmond's channel since forever. So I would love to go, but it's, Making it an actual possibility is the thing. How much do you think the SVO8 will be? I don't know. I don't actually have the marketing price. And if I did, I wouldn't be able to share it anyways. Because last I checked, even like a hotel nearby is like over a grand for like, if I were to like, for the days I would need to go there, you know, go there, set up, do the thing, leave all that. Um, it's, it's like over a grand just for the hotel. And then flights are easily over another grand <laughs> and then travel and then expenses. It, it, it gets expensive quick. It gets expensive very quick. So that goes that, so. I 
these little connectors. Come on. There we go. Uh, Elgu is launching something when they're doing their hype. With I hate that. I, I hate the current trend. And it, here's the thing. They do it because everyone does it. I hate the whole, ooh, what? It, it, it's engagement baiting. It's all engagement baiting. I hate how all these companies do it now where it's like, oh, here's a really dark image of our thing. So that means you're gonna get guaranteed posts of people just lightening the image up and posting replies to that. And then you do like a bait thing where it's like, oh, what do you think it is? Wrong answers only. I I really hate the enshittification that advertising in all, in all markets has become because it's all engagement baiting. And then don't get me wrong, I'm a YouTuber, content creators, we do engagement baiting too. Like it, it So that's why we do it. So it do be how it is though. It do be how it is though. Where my boots at? Like with the positron, I just dropped photos on the right. Oh yeah, positron, yeah, but that's an actual thing. Like I can't wait to actually build one finally. I got I got what LDO sent me in like December, but it's not like ready, so. Do you want to know more? I always want to know more. There we go. Uh, and that is, that's a fan too. So that's heater fan. Or rough, we really cleaned them up for, awesome. Yeah, I can't wait. I want I can't wait to build one. Cause it, it kind of sucks. Cause it, in case you haven't noticed, there's been a little bit lack of builds so far this year on the channel. Like we've got the Milo and whatnot, um, but just a bunch of stuff that was like planned to be built on this channel in like the first quarter of this year, just got delayed. Stuff got delayed. So it happens. I mean, I haven't had to subject you guys to a screw sorting stream yet. So it hasn't gotten that bad yet, but. <laughs> then it's sending a print to your Prusa. We're baiting the sending a print to you. What? What does that mean? I've been sending prints to my Prusa for the past week. It's been fine. What? Helldiver Salt. I will say Helldiver is probably the best game to get addicted to right now because you could play for like an hour and just log off and you're fine. Like that's what I, that's how I play. Usually like after the little guy goes down, I'll hop on, we'll, we'll, we'll smash some bugs, spill some oil for a couple hours, an hour or two. And it's like, okay, I'm done and I'm good. Like there's so little FOMO in that game. It's great. Yep, major orders and log up. Yep, you, you, you do your daily, you do your major order. You, you do a couple missions for the middle, major order. And then off you go. The thing is, I haven't even, I think I only have like level six difficulty unlocked. I haven't even unlocked difficulty seven. Simply for the fact that I keep playing with new people. So. Pia Polly, gifted five community memberships. Cheers and appreciate it. Uh, if that's Mark, are you, are you gonna make it out to uh, Rocky Mountain? I know last we talked, you said you were trying to. If it is Mark, I don't I don't know who actually is on the channel right now. <laughs> there we go. I uh, don't have a booth. We'll try. Okay. Well, hope to see you out there. Yeah, I know the booths went really quick. The booths went really quick this year, which is good for that. Okay, so park cooling fan hot. Or hot end fan negative. Okay. Yeah, so this is what I'm working on. So as you can see, 
This little board right here, you plug your two fans in it, and then if you had LEDs, you would plug the LEDs in too, but I don't have any LEDs in here. And then this has a header pin. So when you have the board that's mounted to your stealth burner, it just connects like this. Okay, so the front connects like that. So that way, if you take the front off, you don't have to disconnect the fans every time. It just makes it a lot easier to work with. So it's a nice system. I like it. I like what they've done. The only downside is that it is a little bit annoying to work on because it is kind of compact. There we go. So that is our fan truck. So now we attach this. Now for those wondering, I didn't have to print anything because this is a Galileo 2 and the Galileo 2 supports this by default. So you don't have to, uh, you don't have to print a little spacer. The Galileo 2 just supports these type of boards by default. Although I probably am gonna have to extend this one here. Okay, so um, this is broken, so let me get rid of this. Spent four months with support to resolve fine print artifacts, which never got resolved. It is what it is. No printer is perfect. Printing, print, 3D printing is an imperfect science. And you, sometimes you, you, what you get is what you get. Like, you can tune out a lot of stuff, but sometimes, depending on the hardware that you have, that, that's, you know, sometimes that's all you're gonna get. Um, what I don't know is I printed a bunch of stuff of this and I don't know where I put it all. Where did I put it? I printed a bunch of stuff for this. Where did I put it? Oh, I put them right here. Aha. Okay, so let me fire this up. I gotta, I gotta install some heat sets. Should I be installing heat sets on my laptop? Probably not, but I'm gonna do it anyways. Turn that on. Does this kit come with heat sets? It does not. I'm assuming it wouldn't. Blind gantry or triple belt set with auto tilt front. For what? Depends on the printer. Depends on the size. Depends on the form factor. Depends on the use case. Uh, ba -ba -ba. Is this is this going 48 volt? No, this is not 48 volt. I don't have any printers that run 48 volt except for the VZBot. Um, what extruders support the Bontech DD listed on the War on Bomb? Um, the stock, a uh, clockwork two, I believe. For 250, um, just build a uh, Trident. 250, Trident style. Although for 250, having everything you need to, uh, for the, for the, the three for the bed is kind of overkill, but it still looks cool, so. If you're wondering what I'm doing back here, I'm putting heat sets in. thing that I printed. What do I think of Seaboard kits? I've got no opinion because I haven't built one. Um, apparently they're doing pretty good. Apparently I, uh, the recent ones are pretty good. They kind of got known as the cheap kits and then they came out with some kits that are pretty good. Um, I did speak with them at Smurf and they wanted to send me a kit and I'm like, cool. And I haven't heard anything since. So I might reach out to him, I don't know. Um, we'll see. We shall see.
Let's conceal the orange and blue. It's a Nerf blaster. Also, I'm not handling it, so it's okay. And it's a Nerf blaster. It shoots Nerf darts. It kind of sucks. I had to replace this because the old one broke. Uh, final release of Galileo 2 happened. I don't know. Maybe. I, I've got Galileo 2s in two printers, and neither of them have been issues, so. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So... Uh, with this, you don't, with the Galileo 2, you don't have to uh, print a little space here because this it has it basically built in. But if you want to know if it released, just check the GitHub. So that's that. So now, put this back in. Or actually, before I do that, I want to make sure all this is tight because this is. Yeah, let me let me take. I'm gonna take this off. I make sure everything's tight on this. I got a feeling I got some loose connections here. Thoughts on the Orbiter extruders? Uh, they're nice. I've got one or two installed in printers. So they're nice. Any Vora kits worth your time? Um, the LDO ones. The only Voron kits that I myself have no problem fully endorsing saying, yes, go buy them is the LDO ones. I'm not saying the other ones are bad. I'm just saying the LDO ones are really the only ones I have a ton of experience with that I have, have no problem going, go buy them. Um, so. Can't slide that off, that's a little profile. Okay, now comes the sketchy part where I slide the rail off the carriage, or the carriage off the rail. Make sure these are all tight. That's probably why everything was kind of moving. Okay. Yeah, the LDO kits are, you're probably not gonna find better quality in a kit. Now, are they most economical? Eh, depends on your budget. Are you concerned about the orange on Milo? I am not because I, I one, it's a Nerf blaster, and two, I can't touch it. That's simply it. You're not allowed to handle firearms on a live stream. There are no firearms in this room at all, and I'm not touching anything. So, I'm good. And also, I totally did forget that I put that there before I went live. But it's there now, and I can't move it. Well, okay, I probably could move it. As long as, you know, somebody doesn't decide to be smart and, and uh, you know, report it. Because that's what got me last time. Somebody reported me. For not doing anything. I lost the ball. Oh, that ball is gone. Oh, well. Oh God, I don't like this. Ooh, I am losing so many balls here. Oh. 
Like it's not too bad on here because it's a Z. But should be able to get these back in. There we go. Grease. Could be acorns. <laughs> yeah, I understood that reference. one ball oh I can live with that I can live with that I can live with that okay more like buttons eh, if you want to hit the like button do the thing because, you know, we do have the giveaway at the end of the stream of the spool of Polymaker filament. And I'm not saying if you, you, you like the smash button that it's going to increase your odds of winning. But now that I've mentioned it, are you really going to risk it? Are you really going to risk it? I know I wouldn't. Any idea when Voron will release Tap R2? Eh, some point. For those that are unaware, maybe new, I'm on the Voron team. So I'm privy to information that's not public and asking me for it will not grant you that information because, you know, if as a team we've discussed or we've, you know, We've decided not to release information on it. I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna pull, uh, what is it, the, the whatever something layer guy and, and leak it early, because that would be bad. Okay, so now we put that back in. There we go. And then I can put the front on. And now this. Just goes on like that. There we go. Easy peasy. And then we screw that in. By the way, that tap two, that tap R2 or whatever it's, people are calling it, that is mostly for the um, Phoenix. If you're referring to that one, the one that's on the Phoenix, that uses machine components. So that will probably never make it to official Voron um, because a standard Voron doesn't have machine components. So it might be an uh, optional upgrade, but it'll never make it into stock. Why aren't you screwing it? Did I 
us a donation. Oh, for Rico, $2, cheers, appreciate it. And Derek, $10, cheers and appreciate it. Uh, I'm sorry, I missed that. I wish LDO published an integrated manual with all their specific stuff with single feed. Yeah, it, it, it is kind of annoying having to like, they have different docs for everything. Um, it kind of makes sense, but it is kind of annoying. Don't get me wrong. Hey, you can just kind of see what I'm doing. Yeah, switch that. What is the LDO Nighthawk? It's this. Nobody Googles anything anymore. It's a uh, tool headboard. The tool headboard. So it is. that Whoop. see the tool headboard that's a nighthawk and now we got to wire it up hopefully they updated the uh, documentation <laughs> hopefully they updated the documentation okay so for this we're gonna be doing some crimping and stripping I think it uses Ones. Yeah. Go. Okay. So, hot end plugs into there. So we'll do the hot end first, and the thermistor plugs in there. Okay. So we're gonna do some shortening now. Is it CAN bus? It's USB, which is great because it makes it a hell of a lot easier to program. Because uh, fun fish fact, uh, with Clipper, uh, tool head boards and, and USB are fine. As long as you can do the power delivery. Which most, uh, you can with the little breakout board this comes with, so. All I know is thankfully the XG hot end doesn't have Fiberglass thermistors, because those are stupidly annoying. So CAN bus has the advantage over USB on long distances. However, with how long the wire runs are on a 3D printer, even something like this, you really don't run into any issue with a USB um, signal. So, yeah. Working on wires in a tight area is kind of annoying. Oh, one second, one second, one second. Also, I figured out what I'm doing with the door. Uh, Andrew, $10, cheers, and appreciate it for the pull fund to go along with all the stripping. hey -o. There we go. Okay, one. <laughs> Have you ever, I've done this and I hate it when I do it, when you're trying to crimp something and you accidentally cut the wire, cut another wire or cr crunch another wire. Uh, I went CAN bus and I don't regret it. CAN bus is fine. If you've already built it, like if you've already built it with CAN bus, you're fine. CAN bus is just a pain in the butt to uh, to get it programmed and whatnot. Like what you, what you make up what you save in simplicity by going CAN bus hardware wise with wiring, you make up for it with more complexity on the firmware side of things, flashing and updating and whatnot. It, it's, a, it's a more tedious process than just USB. So now you can just do USB and you get both. Go tap changer, there you go. Like there are advantages to it. Like there are advantages, you can daisy chain CAN bus. 
God dang it. Did I crunch that? I don't know. Did I crunch it? Oh, no, I did. We're good. I, uh, my crimpers, I use PA09s. That's my, I, they've been my go-to for years now. Um, I know there are better ones. I like my PA09s. Except when they don't work. Shoot. Like this little tight setup that we got in here right now. There we go. There we go. So this is easy because there's no it's a thermistor, so you don't have to worry about the wires going in a certain way. Okay, so that's the thermistor. Okay, now for the heater, this uses ferrules. So this will be a lot easier. Oh, and for those wondering, the plan today is hopefully get all the hardware done today, and then Friday we'll do the firmware and then a print and chill. That's kind of the, uh, the plan is when YouTube's like, hey, you're live right now. I'm like, I am? Oh my God. Crimpin, ain't. Crimpin is easy, but if you find it ain't easy, I do have a shirt for that in the store. Link in the description or type exclamation mark merch. Because I really got to update that merch store. Crimping's not too bad. As long as you got music or podcast on, something to keep you busy, and it isn't too bad, honestly. Disturbed and cut off the rest of your name. Gift to 10 community memberships. Cheers and appreciate it. Thank you. Well, this doesn't want to go in. Right, go, go in the hole. What's going on? Sometimes when you when you crimp these, they don't like squish flat enough. Okay, I'm gonna swap these. I don't like these. Fortunately. Do I have enough room? I do, okay. I'm gonna swap these to a, uh, a smaller one than what came with the kit. Because these really don't wanna go in.
smaller ferrule. Yeah. Where are my ferrules? Nothing in here? Where are my ferals? Oh, they're there. Behind the monitor. The ones that came with the kit don't really want to fit too well up in the, the thing. I don't want gray or white. We'll go with grays. Was it open all the way? It was. Always give them a tug too. Always give them a tug to make sure they are actually seated. Like, last thing you want is them to fall off. There we go. One. You solder your crimps for good measure? Never solder a crimp. Never solder a crimp. Never. The crimp itself is all you need. If your crimp can't hold the connection, redo the crimp. Soldering a crimp is a horrible idea. Never do that. You never want solder in a mechanical joint, okay, like this. Because what happens is, is when you tighten the connection, okay, when you, when you screw it down and tighten it, the solder can move. It can reflow. It gets soft as it heats up. If the if the connection ever gets hot, the solder will soften. And then something that was nice and compressed, because the solder softened, isn't. Because it expands and contracts, and it expands and it contracts, and it expands and it contracts. And then next thing you know, it falls out and it causes a short. Never solder a crimp. Never solder a crimp. Okay. Um, so there's the hot end cartridge. We've done that. We've done that. There's that. We don't got to worry about that. Probe. So in this case, we need ground and ABL. So we'll have a top two. So I'm going to have to extend this, unfortunately. So I got I to gotta make a, a new one of these. Oh. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh. Uh-oh. Uh the connector came off with it. Uh-oh. Hopefully I can fix this, otherwise. Uh oh, uh oh. I think I can. I, can, I think I could just slide it back on. Hopefully. Yeah. Yeah, we're good. We're good. Okay. We could fix it. How does this wire up, anyways? Uh, okay. So this is the twenty. This one will do twenty-four volts or twenty-five volts. That's good. So what do we got? Ground signal positive. Okay. So I need to make a new wire right here. Because this is too short. So hopefully I have spare wires for this. Hopefully I can reuse some of this. I think I can reuse that. I think I can reuse that. Okay. Whew. I think we're okay.
Bonjour de France. Bonjour. Es-tu bien? Je suis bien. Okay, got that one out. That one out. Uh oh. Uh oh, come on. Nope. Shoot. These little connectors are a pain or Ariel. These things are French. These things are French bread. There you go. Okay, so now I need some wire. Sacrificial wire! The best kind of wire. No, I don't want to use you. Who's got a three wire run that I can sacrifice? Perfect. Perfect. Huzzah. Okay, so we got signal, which is where we use blue. Uh, get ready. There we go. There we go. Ah, paquet tout le français ne peut pas parler l'anglais en anglais. Ah, mon français n'est pas très bien. Je parle juste un petit peu de français. Moi, je peux comprendre. Ah, une. Je peux comprendre. Ah, beaucoup de français, mais je ne peux pas parler français parce que. Uh, parce que c'est long temps, je parlais français uh, beaucoup. Si. <laughs> went to immersion. I went to a French immersion school until grade six. Um, my brother and sister did not have the greatest time in French school. So my parents pulled us all out. Um, I was speaking okay French. The problem is you use it or you use it or you lose it, right? So I don't have anyone in my family at the time spoke French. I don't live in a French area. Um, well, actually, there is some French communities near me, but it's just like I, you know, you go from using it every day to never using it, and you just lose it. So kind of sucks, but it is what it is. I'll do that in Kapla Busk. Uh, I, I don't even know Klingon. I know Kapla. Speaks Pascal. Are we on Malevolon Creek now? Got the nice relaxing music playing while I crimp wires. How else would you like to spend? This is the best way to spend your Saturn or your 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 choose die. We're clean. Well, you, I, I know Kapla. Now you know Kapla. So now we know as much Klingon as each other. More guttural kapla. There we go. Okay. So. Let's see. How do I plug this in? Make sure I plug this in the right way. So we're going to go on this side. Hi. You can see her at the back of my head for a second. Okay, so that plugs in. So ground signal positive. Okay, so ground is the bottom. Signal is the middle. And 
positive is the top. Is that right? That's right. Cool. Thank you for helping, class. <laughs> Oh, no, that's not tight. What about you? Are you tight? You're tight. There we go. Okay. How long have you had the uh, SG-08 in the garage? Uh, not long, because it's actually not in the garage. It's just outside the garage, because I don't have room in the garage for it right now. Um, they sent it to me, I've had it for a couple weeks, but I'd rather build it on a live stream than, like here's the thing, I'm not gonna do a review on it because there's no, I hate doing reviews. I hate doing reviews on printers, especially when they have a, a time. Like when they say, hey, you can't make any content before this day. You know what that means? I can either unbox it now and spend a ton of my time doing testing and do a full review video on it and release it the exact same time that everyone else does it, or I can go live and just do a live stream where we have fun and do my normal thing on it. And guess which one will be better for my channel? My most profitable video I've ever made in terms of just the video itself being profitable and ad revenue sense is my Saval SV06 video, which was a live stream. Because it just popped off. It just popped off. So, because guess what? I don't care about views on videos. I really don't. Because ever since, you know, YouTube has shorts, views don't mean anything on a video anymore. You can bot them, you can game them. It doesn't matter anymore. Plus I figure, you know, building it on stream will give people a better, you know, kind of understanding of what they're getting into with it. I didn't crack the box open yet. The birthday stream. Oh, yeah, the birthday stream was going great till it wasn't. <laughs> but yeah, I don't really do reviews. Like, it's hard to do a review. To do a review properly, you need to spend like months with the printer because the problem is so much of a printer nowadays is uh, quality control stuff. Because here's the thing, if I did a video on my on my Creality K1C, it's like, cool, okay, you unbox the printer, you read the specs, you do a few prints on it, and you show the prints off. Like, I'm sorry, that's, I hate doing that kind of content. It's boring as hell. I hate doing it, so I won't do it. But, you know, doing a live stream, we can talk about it. We can look into it. If you have a specific question, you can ask. I can look into it. it it's it's a much more engaging type of content, and I, I have way more fun doing that. So I, I'd rather live stream something than do a video on it most of the time. Luke's Lab, Calamity Hot End Thoughts. Um, it's a thing. I know as much as um, the name because this is what I'm first hearing about it. So uh, there you go. Probably pretty cool. Um, if it's a super ultra high flow hot end, you probably don't need it. But if you do, hey, it's a thing. Need another birthday stream to make up for the fiasco. I will say the uh, the comeback stream. Um, well, well, I was very, it was good to see. <laughs> That was the most stressful weekend I've had in a long time. I, I will say it got better pretty quick because I found out about midway through Saturday that I was out of YouTube jail. Um, but I didn't actually get full confirmation till Monday. So it was like all of Saturday, all of Friday was just me freaking out, figuring out what the heck I'm gonna do because I've just basically lost my job. <laughs> and then, uh, And then halfway through Saturday, I figured out, hey, okay, cool. Uh, the ability to stream is restored, but I don't know for sure because I haven't actually got a notification from YouTube. 
So I'm gonna wait until I actually get a notification to make sure we're good um, before I actually, you know, fire it up kind of thing. Cause it's happened on other platforms where like, if you get banned or whatever, and it, somehow you got back in early cause they like screwed up and they like released your, your, your lock early. And then you're like, hey, I'm back. And they're like, oh wait, we screwed up. No, you're still banned. And now you're, you got hit with ban evasion because you shouldn't be streaming right now. You knew better. We didn't tell you you could come back. <laughs> Means things are, don't go smoothly out of the box. We could see it and you can't get at it. Yeah. I've got, it, it's a stipulation. I've had a few companies like want to send me stuff and they're like, hey, uh, we want to see the video before you put it live. And I'm like, no. It, it, we don't do we don't do that round here. If, if you want, if you want to send me something, when I put the video out, it's out. You get what you get. Oh shoot. Okay, that might have. Are we good? I think we're good. Hopefully, I didn't break that. Okay. Okay. So that is now. So we got the. That, so now I gotta plug in the motor. I think, is this the motor? Or no, the motor's on the back. So, oh shoot, I'm gonna have to take that off. Okay. Because, okay, I gotta take this off. Am I keeping the cable chains? I'm keeping the cable chains simply for the fact that this is a um, a 350 Trident. It's big. And if you look, this top hat is as tall as the top panel. So I don't think I can fit an umbilical like without this much overhead. It's, it's basically gonna constantly rub on the top panel and I'm worried about it drooping into the print volume. So I'm gonna run the, uh, the drag chain. I'm gonna run it through the drag chain, which it's fine. The guy who designed this runs his in a drag chain and it's fine. <laughs> uh, won't compare filaments of different brands. So the problem is bad mouth. How do you want me to do that? Do you want me to spend a ton of my own money sourcing filament from countries that I can't even get filament from? I mean, I'm in Canada. There's there's a lot of filament I can't get here or will cost me like $50 and shit. Prusa Mint. I have coupons for free Prusa. I've got over a thousand Prusa points. And I've converted some of that to like merch, like hats and shirts and, and stuff. The problem is I can't, I, I would spend more on shipping on a free spool of filament from Prusa than I will from just buying a spool with shipping included from Polymaker. So yeah, and you ready? Most filaments made by the same company. A good chunk of filament from the larger companies is all made by the same company made by the same manufacturer. It's all the same resin. The only difference is quality. It, it's like you have a bunch of shit tier filament and then as soon as you get to good filament, it's all within margin of error in my opinion. Polymaker, great stuff. Buy it, link in the description. You can win a spool. Prusament, good stuff. Jesse, good stuff. Inland, guess what? That's Polymaker. Guess what? Guess who makes Bamboo's filament? Do you think Bamboo has a, their own filament farm? Do, do, do you think they have their own filament farm for their own brand of filament? Do you think they're making their own filament? So, yeah. So, here's the thing. Buy good filament and it's probably gonna be good. Yeah, you'll get the odd, you know, the guy unspooling it, you know, screwed up and got it tangled, whatever. Like stuff happens, you'll get the odd spool that has an issue. But once you get above like buying whatever the cheapest filament on fam Amazon is, you really can't go wrong with most major name brand filaments. Let's be honest. And anything is gonna, you're gonna see a bigger difference between the filament types than within brands. Like I use the exact same ABS profile for temps on all my machines for ABS and ASA. Same temps, same bed temp, same flow rates, same nozzle temp on all my machines for all ABS and ASA. It's the exact same profile. D does it matter? I mean, this, okay, you ready? Ready, let's, let's, let's pull out some stuff. Okay. This is Sparta 3D a ABS Galaxy ASA. Um, this is uh, Sparta 3D Sand ABS. 
Um, this is Polymaker Black ABS. And this is Polymaker Black ASA. They're all printed on different machines. They all use the exact same profiles. All the pro, all the machine, all the prints came out fine. So like, I don't know. If you want a printer review, if you want filament review, go, I think Zach Friedman just recently did one. Go watch his. Although I, I disagree with him because he thinks ABS is poo-poo. And I, I, I firmly disbelieve that. I firmly believe he's wrong there. Um, but yeah, it's, yeah. Okay, so now we gotta make this go up here. So this is gonna be fun. So this is where the motor plugs in. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut this right there. And then I'm just gonna keep the same order of wires. Cause here's the thing, okay? Just like printers, just like extruders, there is no best filament for anything. Everything has a use case. Everything has pros and cons. For example, the Nerf blaster that I have back here is entirely in PETG. It's a lot of thin parts printed vertically. You want very good layer adhesion. And also because it's a Nerf blaster, there's a lot of pressure and spring stuff involved. You need impact resistance. Hey, PETG works really good in that result. So he said ASA is a better version of ABS. And in 3D printing, in our use case, it's margin of error difference between ABS and ASA. I've, I've never encountered a scenario with any print I have done where ABS has let me down and ASA was was the key. Like, I don't even, I don't, I keep them together. I don't even differentiate between ABS and ASA. They're so similar when you print them, especially if you print good quality ABS. Now, if you're printing like, you know, the stuff you bought for $5 off Amazon special warehouse deal, yeah, you're probably gonna have a bad time. But if you're printing like, you know, Polymaker, Crucement, you know, the good stuff. You're, you're, you're really not gonna notice the difference between ABS and ASA. As long as you print them in a nice warm enclosure. So. I don't know. I think people get a little, like, a little too hung up on the little stuff. patio furniture. Yeah, like if you are printing something that will literally sit outside baking in the sun nonstop, okay, yeah, a ASA has a pretty good advantage there, okay? But most of us aren't. <laughs> I mean, most of my prints are stuff that I'm gonna paint or whatever, or they're printers. There aren't, there's really not a lot of UV in my garage. You use Inland and Stratasys for everything. So Inland, so you use Polybaker. <laughs> and Stratasys, which is MG94, at least for their ABS, which is the good stuff. Uh, do I agree with Zach that PCTG, what is PC? I, I've never used PCTG. I've used polycarbonate. I've used uh, carbon fiber polycarbonate a few times, but PCTG I've never used. Used PC. Make ASA acetone slurry, slide that over your ABS instant upgrade. There you go. Inland is a mix of brands. Yeah, it's true. Some of the older stuff is is Esun. Esun's fallen off, in my opinion. Esun used to be really good. There, Esun ABS Plus used to be like my go-to ABS for bulk prints, because while it wasn't as good as pure ABS, it was like ninety percent of the way there, and it was just so consistent and reliable, and you could get it cheap. And then they changed the formula, and now it sucks. Uh, KVP, they didn't give up. KVP, there's a bit of a story behind it. I don't really blame KVP. Well, it... the company that owns KVP moved the production facility and they pretty much had to start over with all new staff. So anyone who's been with a company that's had a move where you lose like a majority of your workforce knows it takes some time to kind of get things back together. And unfortunately it hit them at a bad time and then COVID and whatever. And I don't think they ever fully recovered, but that's basically what it, it wasn't a, like, it's not like they purposely did anything. It's just, they, they lost pretty much all their staff and had to start over. 
So. Which sucks. Like I've only, to be honest, I've only used two spools of KVV filament. I've only, I've only ever had two spools because somebody sent them to me. Because I went to buy them once and shipping to Canada was crazy expensive, so I never did. PCTG is like high temp PETG. So in that case, why not just use like ABS or ASA or just PET? Not PETG, regular PET. Okay, let me get rid of these because these are the wrong ones. Uh, where? Uh oh. Uh oh. Where did I. How did I misplace? How do you misplace that? I need I need one more crimp. Is this one? There we go. From manufacturing Toronto. Um, I have a local manufacturer, but I don't think they've been making any lately because they've had supply issues getting the raw resin. Um, but they made ABS was MG94 ABS, and they sold filament in. Um, 600 meter spool, so it worked up to like 1.4 or 1.3 kilograms for a spool of filament. And it was really nice. Uh, Replitech, they're local to me. And they were really good until they they stopped making stuff because I think they ran out of production capability. Like they, they couldn't get the resin, essentially. PCTG is easier to print than ABS. So the thing is maximum, I have no issues printing ABS. So if something's easier than ABS to me, that means nothing, because ABS is easy to me. So it doesn't like, it's not as big of a thing. Okay, so what do we got? We got blue, red, green, black. So blue. Red. Green. Black. As long as the order is right, you're good. You don't have to worry about direction because you can just flip that if you need to. Yep. Uh, PCTG is twice the price. Ooh, okay then, yeah, no. Like, here's the thing, like, if you can print this vertically in ABS without any cracking, okay, there's no there's no cracks to this. This, this is, this didn't crack at all. It oh, we got a little bit of string, whoop de do. But this printed vertically like this. I had support here on the bottom and then I had some support up top here that literally just broke right off. So like if you can print this vertically in ABS without it cracking or warping or anything, what's wrong with ABS? And this is Sparkle ABS too. And this was on uh, Tallboy? Yeah. Yeah, this was Tallboy. The front part was on the Magneto. Okay. So now we've got the motor. So there's the tool head cable and end stop, which we're gonna try sensorless on here. We're gonna try sensorless. If sensorless doesn't work, I'm dropping sensorless. Um, so let me pull off the pod here. Have you tried voxel ASA? Nope. I'll be honest, the majority of the filament I have right now is Polymaker. I am running low. I am gonna have to restock soon. Um, so we'll see. Right now, the majority of my filament is Polymaker. So that's gone. Um, what size screw is that? Sixteen mil. M sixteen. M three sixteen. M three sixteen. 
Uh, Jerry, thank you for coming to member. Cheers and appreciate it. Uh, did you previously have issues? I did, but that was also with the Fizek board and I didn't really like it too much. So we're gonna try with the Leviathan. And if it doesn't work, you can easily add um, an X end stop to the tool head and then a Y end stop back here. And then we're done. Voxel shipping to Canada is crazy expensive. Well, then there you go. So I'll probably never try it then. There we go. Okay. So that is our tool head. All nice and cleaned up. Nice and clean. Okay, we're good there. Sweet. So now, gotta put this all back together. I hear a siren. Oh no, this is cracked. Let me get some glue. Uh, Polymaker ASA. Yeah, I, that's why I run my beds at like 105 usually. Usually when I'm printing, I run my bed at 105 for the first layer and then I drop it to 100 pretty much all the time. I, I'm a big proponent of, I'd rather print hotter than I need to um, for better at layer adhesion and whatnot. Um, where did, oh, I put it up top. Nope, oh, yeah, there, there's the ABS glue. Good stuff. I love me glue. Fill 3D glue. Hold that together. Get that set up for a minute. First layer 105, remaining 100 to 95. Yeah, it depends on the geometry of the part. I, I, I know I've accidentally overcooked some low hanging overhangs by having the bed too hot, but you know what? I'd rather have the print finish. Uh, 90. The problem with 90, I find 90 works really good sometimes and fails horribly other times. Um, and since I run everything more tuned for reliability than looks and like a print that finishes will always be the print that doesn't finish. So the Nerf stuff, it's a Nerf blaster. It's, it's a bright paint. It's a bright orange Nerf blaster. Plus I'm not handling it. So we're not breaking any YouTube rules. But you know, if you keep drawing attention to it, it's like every now and then I'll do something where like I'll, I'll hold up a box that accidentally has my address on it. Or, you know, and I, I go in after the stream and I edit those sections out. You can cut the section out or blur it or whatever. Uh, or I'll accidentally like leak Wi-Fi credentials or something. And then you always get the people that are like, leave a comment about it or write in chat. Hey, did you I just say you asked it? Okay, great way to draw attention to it, dumbass. <laughs> Why would you do that? Why would you do that? Oh, wait, you, you, you want uh, acknowledgement. Do it through DMs, do it through DMs, okay? Like if you see something on stream that shouldn't be on stream, Zip it. <laughs> Cinepa. Yeah. There we go. Voila. So now we have this guy. Well, we got these two things. Okay. 
And then we have the cable. Woo, the cable, the long cable and a USB cable. So this is our cable of power. So this is power delivery and USB. So it's got a nice little splitter. So I'm gonna have to get, where did I put the drag chains for this? Where did I put the drag, where did I put the drag chains for this? Did I? Oh, they're over here. There we go. So I don't remember which one's which. I don't think it matters. Are they both the same length? I think they're both the same length. They are not the same length, but whatever. We'll go with this one. Uh, what have you done been designing up more on stuff? I'm mostly a tester. I, I, I don't really do a lot of design work because I can't design. Um, but when I got on the Voron team, the it was years ago, and the team was much smaller, so it was a lot easier to get on the team at the time. Um, but nowadays, if, if you wonder what I do on the Voron team, mostly feedback and testing, but not as much as I used to because I'm you know full time YouTuber. I used to spend a lot more time testing stuff and whatnot. That was kind of my thing. wanting you to do your job well fortunately you do have rent and or a mortgage so that is something that you have to do but don't worry the stream will be here if you can't watch it live you can always catch it after just like follow along with the chat pretend you're still here pretend, pretend you're engaging with chat Trying to find all the little uh, V slot or uh, cap head screws. They're working on other formats on the Nighthawk. Nice. It is a nice, it is nice. Like having independent stuff is, is nice to have. But this literally plugs in like this. So that goes like that. zip tie for that. That should be okay like that.
that'll be fine. There's nothing, nothing for it to get caught in. Okay, so this goes like that. This goes like this. Okay, so that goes all the way to the end. Oh, we gotta, gotta loosen that. right about there. And then we'll go up through here and then when we go to the back, it clears by a mile. There we go, perfect. Cool, so there's that tool head. I want to extend that. I want to extend that. Just to... Let me see. Let me see. I think I have some extra... I know I have some somewhere. Some extra drag chain parts. I know I have some somewhere. Where? I know I had some. Where did I put them? Where did I put them? Because I don't want to just leave... Whiskey. Extra drag chain parts. Oh wait, maybe in here? Uh. Extra drag chain parts. Extra. Nope. Over here maybe? Nope. I know I had some, I just don't know where I put them. Oh, no. Oh, that's very chain for that. Okay, that's one. Nope. Oh, well. Let's deal from this one. Any keep it is bringing an AMS. Do we know more already? Um, it's an AMS clone. That's all we know. And there really isn't much else to it, unfortunately. Dang it. I was hoping I had more. I guess not. Oh well. Oh well. No biggie. Then get that to snap in. Why aren't you snapping it? There we go. Okay. So you go there. Has it been canceled? I don't think it's been canceled if that's from six hours ago. The newest V2.4. Well, considering the V2's been around for uh, five years now, it's not exactly new. Kickstarter one was canceled. Good. Screw Kickstarter. I'm sorry. If you're here in my chat, don't ever let me find out that you back something on Kickstarter for a 3D printer. And if you do, you need to like fully acknowledge you're burning your money. Because either you're getting a beta product that isn't finished, hello Orange Storm Giga, um, or you're not getting anything. So please, please don't, 
back Kickstarters, especially from established companies. Come on, be better than that. Especially from established companies. Uh, know anything about Creality Hyper ABS? Um, is that it? What's this one? Yeah, um, one of these was printed with Creality Hyper ABS, the other one was Polymaker, and I don't know which one's which. I'm thinking this one's the Hyper ABS. Too shiny of a finish, I don't like it. Creality Hyper ABS gives you a shiny finish, I don't like it. I prefer the Polymaker matte. So, this is, this is Hyper ABS from uh, Creality, and this is Polymaker. Different machines too. I don't know which machine either. It was literally, I need to print something. Oh, hey, Poly or Creality gave me some filament. Well, here we go. It's gone. I've used it all. Or actually, I might have some left. I've got some left. Float it on the Magneto. Nozzle cams aren't worth it. Cool, but not worth it. Do the tedious other fragile rubble camera. I've got the rat rig. My rat rig has one. They're cool for just watching the first layer go down. Beyond that, yeah, they are pointless. They're, they're good for... They're good for checking your first layer. That's about it. Because the problem is you can't like see the print. You can only see a very small portion of the print. So if you're trying to actually, you know, once once you're a couple inches off the ground, you can't even see if your uh, part's warping. So they're cool as a secondary camera, or if you're a YouTuber and you make your living off internet points. Um, but in terms of like actual functionality, there really isn't much to them, unfortunately, which sucks because they're cool, but they're, they are a secondary camera or a YouTube points camera. Dang it. Where did all, I had, oh, I gotta be careful. I keep losing little flathead screws for this. Um, I backed some small projects on Kickstarter, but never a 3D printer. Yeah, that's the thing. Like. You know, if you want to back something on Kickstarter, I'm not going to stop you. But the problem is half the time it goes wrong. You, you know it, I know it. I love putting in screws on an angle. You love putting screws in on an angle? I love putting screws in on an angle. Um, would you try a Nomi just to try it? If they sent me one, maybe. Um, I'm not a huge fan of putting a giant restrictive screen in front of my air intake, um, nor having to look at a screen that's moving around um, at 300 millimeters a second to check the status of my printer. So. Actually, no. You know what? If they did send me one, I probably wouldn't use it. Come on. There we go. I probably wouldn't use it because I, I would, wouldn't like the functionality hit that I would take.
There we go. Make a Nomi Bob figure? What the heck does that even mean? What is a Nomi Bob figure? Not even screwed in. I don't even know. Uh, no, not that one. This one. piece right here. Hey, Calvin. What am I standing on? Nothing. Daddy's just very tall right now. Am I standing on something? Oh, maybe I am. That was school. You did all of it. Why, you want to stand on there? Yeah. You want to help me? Um, I don't really know what we need help with right now. What do we need? What do we need to do next? Oh no, you're 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 ruining the bed. You're twisting the bed. Leave that alone. Oh, they're covered in grease. You're going to get your hands all dirty. Hey, did you have a good day at school? Yeah. Okay, what did you learn at school today? Um, I not know. You don't know? What do you mean you don't know? Yeah, hey, Daddy's working. Are you hiding? Yeah. Well, if you're hiding there, Daddy can't work. Okay, say goodbye. Oh. Say goodbye, wave goodbye. No. No, you gotta go back inside, Daddy's working. Oh. Hey, what do you got on your sleeve? What do you got? You're all dirty, come on. Uh. Come on, back inside. Inside. Inside, buddy. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Yeah, little man. What did you learn today? Stuff. What kind of stuff? I don't know. That was alright. Comey Bob Lincoln Discord. What kind of name is Comey Bob? Okay, so these kind of things, I, I honestly, no offense, I really do not care for these kind of things at all. It's like when they did the contest with like enclosing the P1P where everyone was printing enclosures and I'm like, no, why? That's dumb. Like, I, I don't, I don't know. Put me in the, put, let me put on my no fun allowed hat, but I, those kind of things, I just kind of, I'd rather just, you know, if I was going to have like a small thing, I'd rather just have a small thing with a, with a screen on it instead of like that. Like, I waste a lot of filament. Don't get me wrong. I waste a lot of filament on stupid prints. That's, eh, I don't know. Not my thing. Not my thing. There. We go there. Okay. So now, we've got our cables. So now I gotta run this. So let's do this. This will come down here. And it just goes like that. Then we have 
little cover here. Uh, new Autonomous gunships are chopping up, so good. Well, shoot back. That doesn't sound very democratic if you're letting the bugs win, or the bots win. Just wait till you find their AT-AT. Great camera angle there, Taylor. There's that. And then we have this guy. So this is nice because you only have this. So that goes over there. We'll just kind of shove it down below for now. Stick with the ATST. Yeah, no, they have AT18 -AT now, and they're mobile uh, spawn points for bots. So they're mobile fab factories, apparently, with no uh, vents. So you need to hit them with everything. Awesome. Uh, why print a 320 Death Star when you can print eight parts for a 640? There you go. Why not just do 16 parts and do over a meter? And one of these days, I will print the thing to help put these sleeves on. But not today. There we go. zip ties. a one-to-one -one scale. I don't think a one-to-one -one scale Death Star is in the budget, unfortunately. About the Nighthawk cable versus individual wires versus a chain. Well, this only has four wires in it, and it's a much thicker sleeve. And they're much thicker wires. Versus, you know, 20 different wires individually jammed in a drag chain. The gunship base is hell. I, I've only, I haven't fought the bugs yet, or I haven't fought those yet. Like I've, I've only done like one drop today and that was just to get my uh, daily. So I just did like a level four or five um, extraction by myself. Oh, that's so much cleaner looking. That is so much cleaner looking. Okay, so now I need to put this in. to true scale benchy that floats um if polymaker wants to front me like 70 kilograms of filament maybe um because i we did work it out one time we did work it out on stream and i believe you need to scale a benchy 7000 percent for if if you want to stand at the controls of a benchy and have like holding the wheel like this and you're about a five foot nine human the benchy needs to be scaled about 7000 percent so yeah, I'm gonna need a lot of filament. It won't float. At that scale, it will float. At that scale, you can make it float. You would just need to put ballast in the bottom. At that scale, a benchy would float. I, be I firmly believe at that scale, a benchy would float.
There we go. Tighten these up a bit. There we go. Okay, there's that. Let's infill and make it buoyant. Um, at, th at that scale, you're, it's gonna be buoyant no matter what. The thing is you need to make it watertight. And obviously you're gonna have to print it out of multiple parts and glue it all together. a ton of police sirens today. Okay. Hope I didn't crush anything. Oh, you're garbage. Okay, so now this goes over there. Okay, so now we need to add some stuff. So first, let me kind of organize this a bit because I've got a whole bunch of stuff here. So that's all for the bed. That's that. So I'm going to have to unplug you. Because Raspberry Pi is going to go on the Leviathan. I don't need you. Come on, come on. So let's get this off of this. Fiberglass. If, if I had a workshop, if I had a workshop where I could work on a project that big over several months, yes, I would love to make a actual, like, usable benchy. But I don't have any, like, I barely have room as is for the stuff I do now. Let's be honest. So me trying to build a benchy in here, a, a, a life-size benchy in here, that ain't gonna happen, unfortunately. As fun as it would be, that ain't gonna happen. Oh, dang it, I hate when this happens. late today. That's not good. That's not good. Okay, so where did I put the Leviathan? Oh. Okay, so the thing with the Leviathan, it is a control board pretty much designed with Vorons in mind. So, it's meant to be paired up with a tool headboard. What does that mean? So, on a Leviathan, you have... Four regular motors, one, two, three, four, and, or actually one, two, three, four, five, sorry. You have five regular motors, okay, four, five, and then uh, six, seven are, or wait, no, one, so yeah, zero to five. So you have five regular motors, and then you got two high volt motors. Um, these are 5160s, let me pull it up here, LDO Leviathan. Actually, been a hot minute since I've actually looked at the specs. Um, so yeah, you got five TMC 2209s right across here. So on a V2, for example, that's your your 4Z and your extruder, um, and then you have two 48 volt rated 5160s. So if you want to do high volt XY, in this case, we're not doing high volt. Why? Well, I only have a 48. I only have a 24 volt power supply in here. Also, for the kind of printing I do, 
Eh, I don't really need it. I don't really need it. And it's really cool because it has this little open area here so you can install your Raspberry Pi directly on the board. So that's going to be the first thing we do. So let's pull up the setup guide. Okay, so voltage, remove all jumpers. Those are your voltage. So we are at 24 volts for everything. We're good there. When using a passive tool head board that connects using umbilical cables, either 4T pin, check the 24 share between. Okay. If so, it must be 24. Yeah. So we're at 24 volts. So it's either 24 volts or 5 volts. So there's no 12 volt option, which makes sense. Okay. Mount the Pi. So you can either mount it like that, which is what we're going to do with the little breakout board. Okay. So do you use the short ones or do you use the tall ones? I think you use the short ones. The supply. Doesn't tell you. Well, I'm those look like the short ones, so I'm assuming it uses the short ones. So we'll use the short ones, I guess. I'm assuming it's the short ones. That's the wrong size. There we go, that's good. And you do have the option here if you're wondering why there's so many, if, if, you have six holes, so you can put a pie zero too if you wanted to. But we're doing a full size pie. Why? Because that's what I have. Benchy no float. Well, y'all need to learn about scaling. If you were to make a full size Benchy, which is scaled 7,000%, it would float because uh, square cube law is a thing. Well, not right side up. That's why you put ballast in it. You know, you know, old ships, they had to do that too. They had to ballast them. There we go. Goes like that. Did it clear everything? Yeah, that clears everything. Scalding, I don't know. There you go. Now, I don't know about you. That is a nice clean package. 
And you don't need to deal with the CM4, which is kind of dumb to deal with with a lot of these setups. Usually you gotta use a CM4. This you don't. So. Now I do believe I do need to run 24 volts in here though. I believe. Where did I put those printed parts? I had them. Where did I put the printed parts? For this. Where? I had them. Where did I put them? I had one of them. Twenty-four for both sides for fifty ones. Yep. Oh, they're over here. Okay, so that's gonna go like hopefully these are the right ones. That goes like that. That goes like that. And we are gonna have this go up here like that. Yeah, because most of the motors are gonna be on that side. And then the fans on that side. Yeah, so that'll go there. And then we'll put the other board right there. Actually, uh, wait, wait, wait. I'm trying to remember, I'm trying to remember, I'm trying to remember. Because we have a few other things here. One second, one second. So we got this guy, which, Double check here. Yeah. Yeah, so this goes on like that. Oh. Or it goes on like that. Does it, does it matter what? Wait, which way does this go? Matter which way it goes? Oh, this is Pi 4. So a Pi 4 goes like that. Oh, and that's a Pi 5 adapter. Oh, is it different on Pi 5? I guess it's different on Pi 5. Okay, well. Oh, I got both here. That makes sense. You got a Pi 4 and a Pi 5 adapter. And that plugs in there. That plugs in there. There you go. Now, if you wanted to, you could just do USB. You could do it this over USB. Um, but you would still need to get power from the board. So we're just gonna do UART. And also it does come with this really small USB cable. Like you get this really, really like thin ribbon cable USB, C to B. If you really want it to be fancy, I'm gonna save this for something that I might need this for in the future. Still need the USB cable for CAN. You do for the other thing. You do for the other thing. You do for the other thing. I don't even know where I put that USB cable that I had. Um, you'll see. There's a CAN thing here. Um, on the box? Oh, it's right here. You got this guy. So you have this, which you plug the other end of this in, goes into here. Okay. So we'll put this like here, and then we can make this like that. Cause 
because this you put USB in from this and then you put power in from that too. And then it does all the, the science. But we do get this nice little board here with a nice little lid. Um, like that. And I believe this actually attaches to one of these first, so let's do that. Um, oh wait, no, that... How are you supposed to... Oh, it mounts to this. Like that. So let's, let's see here. So that goes like that. So I want this. So that goes like that. That will go like that. Go like that. Okay, so it goes like that. Time is it anyways? 408. Perfect. For normal can. I'm not doing can. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Six foot tall Mario today printed in PETG. That is a jeez. That's a big Mario. This doesn't line up. How is this supposed to mount? You know what? I'm just going to do this. Ready? This isn't how this is supposed to go. But we're going to make it work. I want to mount it to the DIN rail. Go. That goes like that. This goes on like that. And I just need more. Cables. Give me some screws. There's some screws. How much filament does something like that cost? Well, depends on your infill. Depends on how many walls. Probably a lot or a little, depending on your setup. Hopefully this just screws in and yeah, it does good. Do I have to put heat sets in these? Do I gotta put heat sets in these? No, they just don't what? Are you supposed to put heat sets in these? No, I just need longer screws. Dang it. Let's drop the uh, expensive custom PCB. I don't have any extras of. Smart, smart, very smart. Yeah, I need longer screws. Um, M312s. I remember those. Screws Jeez, I need to stock up on screws. I'm running so low on so many different screw types. That's that. So this will attach. Yes. Right. There we go. Okay. So you come across, and then you plug into there. Click. Bellissimo. And then all the little extra will just jam into this little channel. 
Bueno. That goes there. Now. Um, I need self-tappers. Does this kit come with self-tappers? It does not, so I need self-tappers. Good old self-tappers. I hate self-tappers. Are these metric? No, they're Phillips. Of course Phillips. Why would I use Phillips? Why do I not have my little screwdriver? Will this work? LCT store to the rescue. Imagine you and Phillips. Imagine using Phillips when you can use Robertson, the superior screw type. Where's the where'd the one go I drew? Oh. Oh. Hey! I found the screw I dropped earlier. I wonder why my foot was hurting. Uh, which one of the 2.4 all-wheel drive mods is better for input shaper on monolith or tiny shell? Uh, no idea. Never used them. I, I've never done all. I only have one machine with all wheel drive and it's the VZ bot. Doing it on a Voron, put it this way. I've never run into any performance limitations of a stock Voron setup, but that's my setups. You don't get Robertson down there? That sucks. There's a vice. Is vice still around? Also, I don't get the whole, ooh, there's a special on 3D printing pew pews. Cool. People have been self-manufacturing firearms in the US for decades. It's always been a thing in the States. It's just now, you know, you can just hit file print instead of needing to, uh, here, let me flip this around. Um, instead of needing, uh, you know, a CNC or a bridge port. It, it's... Like, people have been manufacturing illegal firearms forever. still exists in the same way Gawker does, though. They have fire shotguns. I mean, don't go to the plumbing section at your local Home Depot and look at the black pipe. Like, let's be honest. I mean, I'm Canadian, so that's all legal to even begin with for me. Yeah, it's legal. Most states, for those that don't know, in the United States, in, in most, it depends on states, because some states have laws that supersede it, but for federal law in the U.S., according to federal law, you are allowed to manufacture firearms that don't fall, like, you can't make a machine gun or a short barrel rifle or anything like that. Um, but, like, if you wanted to, you know, mill your own AR-15 lower receiver in the U.S., you can't, legally, for personal use. Now, you can't you can't manufacture for uh, distribution without an FFL and a bunch of other stuff. But, you know, if you have a bridge port and you want to, you know, or uh, a press, a stamping press, and you want to make an 8K lower out of a shovel, go for it. It's in the US. You're legal to do it. It's fine. 
potato cannon is legal in Canada? Um, I don't know if potato cannons are actually illegal. It has to do with uh, projectile size and velocity. And I believe if you get bigger than any of those two, you're in no-no land. So like, anything over, now what is, let me see what it is here in Canada. FPS limit, Canada. Um, I think, yeah, anything over 366 FPS in Canada is considered a firearm, I believe. So even some airsoft guns are illegal up here. I mean, I gotta be careful with my Nerf Blaster. My Nerf Blaster is only 100 millimeters a second off that, or 100 meters a second off that. Go. That's a chonky MOSFET. What is, what is this? This is a more sun. What is that on here? I'm trying to figure out what that is. They're mystery. So here's all your, your pit. Oh, by the way, I love this. All companies do this. Like, oh my God, here's all your pins and everything. Oh my God, look how easy this is. Look how easy this is. Holy shit. Like, oh my God. Oh my God, why don't we do this more? Like. Mr. Misters, heat bed, hot end. Like, oh my God, why don't we do that anymore? So where's power in for this? So there's power in. So I need to put 24 volts in here, 24 volts in. There's the hot end. There's the heat bed. Okay. Okay. So now. Slide this on. Come on. Try not to. There we go. One. Is that on? No. Two. There we go. Okay. I'm knocking everything over. There we go. Okay. So that's that. Oh no, I can't see chat. There we go. membership expired well maybe you'll luck out and somebody will gift one between now and then is if you want to help support the channel the content i create and the things i do the best way to do that is become a channel member or gift memberships to others those are the two surefire ways to help support the channel in the best bang for your buck way okay so now um time to wire this back up look at all this stuff <laughs> Let's see, what do we got here? What do we got here? So this is power. This is, where does this come from? Where does this come from? I don't know where this comes from. Where does this come from? Are you Z? You're Z1. You're Z2. And you're probably Z0. Okay, so. 
I'm assuming we got Z0. Z1, so we gotta get this into there, so. How much do we got? That comes across here. So let's show you down here. Underneath that, show you up in here. There we go. Let you go here. There we go. Okay. So this is um so it's ba, so this is the A motor, I believe. Yeah, this is the A motor. That'll be high volt stepper zero. Is the A motor. You come across here. And then we'll just step you under all that. There you go. You get in there. When in doubt, just jam it in. Um, so I'm assuming these two right here are expansion one, expansion two. Okay. So which is which? Are these labeled? No. Um, I'm, I'm assuming one is one and one's the other. <laughs> So I have to cut that. First comes to worst, I just swap those. That's gonna be fun to cable manage that. Okay, um, next we got these. So I'm gonna have to, actually, um, this motor. Okay, so let's get rid of this. This is the other high volt stepper. This is the B motor, yep. Jam you in there. That goes like that, okay. Wait, where does... Oh, that goes down here, okay. Now this is a fan, and this is both fans, so this goes to um, and zero, which one is this? This is Z Pro. These are fans. These are fans, okay. And they're all three pin fans. Ooh. Okay, so I gotta repin this. Gotta repin it. It's the only fan under here. So I don't run chamber fans or anything. So if you want to run a taco, I guess. Very pre-wired for that. Okay, so now I need a three pin connector. That is a two. Are 
are they? Oh no! Shoot, where'd I put my... I had a whole bunch of them. I bought a bunch. Oh. Uh, Nabiki, thank you for coming to member. Cheers and appreciate it. Thank you. What time are we at anyways? 4.30. Looks like it is for these. You have negative. Okay, so you got a T pin. Okay, that makes sense. So the so okay so middle is your ground, and then one side's hot. is the ground and hot is that so this is fan zero there we go Second. wrangling like stiff cable like into a channel is annoying as heck Get in your hole. It's like, I don't want to get in my hole. It's like, get in your hole. It's like, okay. Okay, fine, 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 fine. There you go. Okay. This is for the heat bed. Okay, so this is thermistor. What's my stock Excel and speeds? Depends on the printer. I don't really run my uh, Vorons at like the ragged edge. I tend to run mine a little bit slower and tune more for uh, reliability. Okay, so. Heater bed is this one down here. Yeah, so that's the bed. So that's heater bed. This is going to be power in. So this has been in. And it looks like it is negative on that side, positive on that side. that there's that there we go shove that under there this is I think the Z end stop but I don't think we use this because uh, we have tap <laughs> I'll plug it in anyways just in case um, that end stop is up here. It's that one. Yeah, it's this one. I mean, we already have it. It's already like wired up. I might as well shove it in. Worst comes to worst, I now have a. Uh, this is thermistor. Thermistor. 
Mr. We'll call this TH0. There we go. The fact that this catches on that is really gonna annoy me. Hopefully I'm gonna have to slide this over a bit. Um, Let's slide this over so I have some room here to do stuff. Nothing is more annoying than trying to get a screw that you can't really get at. There we go. Okay, so now hopefully I can slide this whole thing. And I just knocked that fan out. Great. Ah, shoot. Ethernet. If I want to run Ethernet, I kind of don't really care anymore about running Ethernet. There we go. No bother with the Ethernet. Okay. Um, is that it? Okay, so now I need to pow make up some power lines because this, I think, comes with power line. Uh, where did the box go? I just had it. Oh, it fell over there. Um, is this one gonna? So now, toolhead zero. So this provides 24 volts to our tool head uh, board that we have. So this takes the USB and the power and splits it all up and does, you know, because you need five volts for USB, but you also need 24 volts to the tool head. So this does both. Now, I just need to get 24 volts to here, and that's it. So, let's find. 
find something I can use for 24 volt power delivery. This will work. Good old Prusa. Good thing, good, isn't it nice of Prusa to send me a Mark 3.5 adapter for the uh, B closure so I can scavenge it for cables? Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Joe. Any slow delivery from Gamma? Like, define slow. Like, it, it, we just had a holiday. And is it, are you comparing versus previous orders from KB3D or versus other companies? Because you gotta be understand in 3D printing, a lot of the companies that you work with in 3D printing are smaller companies. So usually like, it's just sometimes stuff takes longer. Goes there, that comes over here. Did you receive my Warcraft 2 game? <laughs> you bought Warcraft 2? Why did you buy Warcraft 2? We got 20 minutes left so we got 20 minutes left so if you haven't entered for your chance to win some polymaker filament link in the video description hurry up and enter because you got 20 minutes left does that work yeah that works Yes. No, I don't have democracy to spread in Helldivers. I have dinner to make for the family. Okay, so in this case, that one and that one. I really wish you could just pick a jumper so you didn't have to like, you know, a jumper so you could just, you know, run it, run off, you know, then or run off, you know, whatever you, external because running separate power cable is kind of annoying but it is what it is there we go okay i think that's it i think that's it okay, so i can put this guy back on That's that. There we go. Oh, 
So that's one. And that's two. Oh, that is right. Okay, I did label them right. Cool. these to be as straight as possible across here because this is airflow. You know what? I think I have. So here's the fun pack. These are just generic cables, right? trying to make these look good. You get caught in there. There you go. There we go. When in doubt, jamming in a hole. There we go. Look how nice that looks. Nice and clean. Oh, we got this guy still. Uh, does the blue go like that? Does it go like that? Or does it go like, I think it goes like this. Yeah, it goes like this. Okay. This is supposed to go there. VHB? Why VHB when I could just stick a cable tie through and... <laughs> that is way too tight. <laughs> That is way too tight. <laughs> that is way too tight. I didn't break it. <laughs> you ready? 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 I didn't break it. I've got spares if I did.
come on. No, come on. There we go. There we go. Ta-da. There you go. A random long ribbon cable of cameraness. Okay. We're good. We're done. Okay, so now we can flip it up and power it up and hopefully, or you know what, I'm going to leave it on its side for now. Because if it's going to spark up and explode, I want it on film so I can get, you know, views out of it at least. Okay, so that is off. Plugged in. Um, mobile camera, so at least we get a good view if it goes kaboom. Oh, there's a box down there. I'm like, okay, ready? Three, two, one, for good luck. Well, that wasn't that exciting. And tap works too. Cool. It works. What's this for? What do I? 24 volt LED. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, um, that is so much cleaner. that is that is clean I like that get a picture so I can put it on the internet nice okay cool um, so now we can flip it up is anything drooping out are we good good nothing drooping good okay Printers, a big Papa Joey P. It lives. Look at this. It lives. Well, not really, because it's all screwed up. Because Clipper's freaking out because it's missing like all its connections. Um, but everything seems to be good. So uh, I'll take it for now. For now, it's alive. It's alive. So I will turn this off because that's what we're gonna do on Friday. Friday um, or Saturday, we'll see, we'll see. Uh, the next part will be getting this uh, firmware, firmware shenanigans. So we'll get it all set up and uh, get our printing next week or next stream, hopefully. I don't know if, we'll, if something comes up, I'll do it. I'll do it on Saturday. If not, it'll be on Friday. There we go. Bottom panel. I don't have a bottom panel on any of my printers. I don't bother with it. And fig and chill, probably. Leviathan versus Kraken. For Vorons, for most Vorons, Kraken is designed with Phoenix in mind. Now, I'm not saying, you know, it makes no sense on a non-Voron. Uh, a Kraken would be great on a VZ bot, because then you don't need to do like the uh, all the external 5160 high voltage. Um, 
It's, it's just a much better package for something like the VZBot. If I had not built the VZBot when I, already when I got the Kraken, the Kraken would have gone in the VZBot. Simple as that. Because right now that has like an octopus and then four external steppers and it's, it's a mess of wiring. Um, but yeah, the Kraken make, if you're doing all wheel drive, if you're doing something where you need to power more than two XY motors, Kraken makes sense. But for something like this, Leviathan. Because you get your 5160 still, but it's a much more compact package and it's a lot simpler. Better cooling for external? No. Yes, depends. You don't, the problem with external is they're in, it's like a step stick. You have to cool it individually versus a Kraken, which has the drivers on the board, which has a big fat three millimeter copper pour through the middle or three layer copper pour or whatever the heck it is. So you have the actual board acts like a heat sink. So, yeah, um, so we're gonna do the draw in a little bit here and then uh, we'll call it. Where is... You know what, here, I'll do this because uh, printers, big Papa Joey P. Oh, it's not online. I'm gonna say I'll connect to it and uh, do a software update before we get too far into it because hey, might as well update it before we do that because it's already gonna break. It's already broken. Thoughts on Canvas? What about it? It's a communication protocol for printers and actually a lot of stuff, but we use it in printers sometimes. But this doesn't use uh, Canvas, this is USB. It just uses USPA. Uh, when are we breaking into it? Uh, April 9th, which is a Tuesday. So we'll be doing it on a live stream because we can't do it before then because I'm not allowed to. The Manta can, can it? I'm not sure. I haven't really looked into it. Is needed if you have many boards. Um, five MC. Yeah, if you're doing like a tool changer type setup, then CAN bus, yeah, it makes more sense. But for a single tool head setup like this, USB is just so much more simpler to deal with because it's just USB. It's just USB. You don't got to deal with all the other BS that goes with CAN bus. Time for the giveaway at five o'clock. So if you haven't entered yet, uh, link in the video description. get a tool changer set up. I would love to play with it. I really want to play with a tool changer. You know, I, I, I'd love to get my hands on a uh, Prusa XL to play with. Fortunately, it's not within the budget. It's way outside the budget right now. Um, but I would love to get my hands on one to play with because I think it's a great system. Um, I know there's the uh, the Voron tap changer set up now um, where you, you have like the tool heads up top there. Um, if somebody comes out with a kit for that, I'll be interested, but I really don't want to go self-sourcing because it's still very, the RB Dragons, you know, you got to figure out a lot on your own type of stuff. Um, Travis, okay. I'm really going to start really ragging on people. No offense. I'm really going to start. You're asking me to compare something with something that's not released yet. Literally, all I can do is read you a spec sheet. I, I can't give you any opinion. No one can. I have an SV08, it's still in the box because we can't talk about them till the uh, next Tuesday. So like, I, I can't I can't help you because I can't comment on, I can read you the spec sheet, but you can read the spec sheet too. So I can't, I can't. Like, I don't know how much of a build it is. Is it is it gonna take as long to build as a Voron or is it like a, a three hour thing? I don't know. 
Like, and, it, and no offense, it's just, I see questions like that a ton. Anytime, anytime Joel's streaming, anytime I'm streaming, anytime ModBot's streaming, anytime any content creator in 3D printing, you get people asking between two different printers all the time. And half the time it's like, especially when they're like, hey, I just unboxed this. We're going through the first turn on, like it hasn't even melted plastic yet. And people are asking, hey, should I get this or a bamboo? And it's like, well, what do you want me to say? I can't give you an answer. And if I give you an answer, I'm, I'm, I'm being bad. I'm, I'm not doing my job because I'm not giving you an information, an answer based on any information I've gathered. So yeah, I can say if you were to ask me like between bamboo and K1 right now, my, my stance is, do you need multicolor? If not, K1 Max got a much better print volume. As long as you don't get a lemon of a QC issue, you're gonna be able to do more with that printer. Now, if you need multi-material, or correction, if you need multi-color, the AMS is not a multi-material system, it's a multi-color system. Um, anything single nozzle that purges between filament swaps is a multi-color system, not a multi-material in my opinion, but whatever, that's marketing. Um, if you are plan, need multi-color than a bamboo system, simple as that. Like, but it depends on the use case, it depends on the user. If you tell me, hey, this is for a company, I'm gonna tell you avoid bamboo like the plague because you, you don't know network, like you, you have no guarantees with security with it because it's a cloud system. And it's, again, you don't need, it's not just bamboo, it's anyone who hacks bamboo. Look look what just happened. Look at the, the, the Linux people. What would the thingy with XV or XZ or whatever the heck it was, where like everything running Linux apparently almost had a back door put into it, like the other day or something. And some like Microsoft nerd figured it out because there was like a half millisecond longer for something to boot up. So yeah, anything that's a cloud service, like as of right now with the way things are, with the enshittification of the way things are going with everything, if you tell me this is for business or school, I'm gonna tell you to not get anything that requires a cloud for basic functionality. Everything has a back door. Um, if I'm not mistaken in a, like, basically any product sold in China that's electronic needs to have a back door. The government requires it over there. A lot of countries do that too. Pretty sure Russia does. Um, you gotta hope they turn that off when they sell their stuff overseas. Look at DJI. DJI has had a massive issues. Um, they're banned on every all of Department of Defense property because it has a camera in it, it tracks GPS data, and it uploads that to the cloud. A malicious party could do a lot of damage with that information. Imagine having the access to every piece of drone footage ever recorded in the US with GPS collated data. You could do a lot of damage with that, especially nowadays, especially nowadays. So. Deal with software for the government. Yeah, the, why do you think I love Prusa? Ready? Right. I'm gonna, I'll be back in one second. Then we're gonna do the drone. I'll be back in one second. Then we're gonna drone. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. I'm gonna go get the Prusa Mark 3.5. Where is 3.5? There's the 3.5. Okay. Okay. This is the kind of thing that you want to see from a company if you do business in printing, right? Like, this is the kind of thing that if you're buying a printer and you want to see what the company does, you know, you're a company and you want to see the company that makes the thing that you need for work does that to make sure that they're, you know, their head's in the right place. You ready? This is a Prusa Mark 3.5. So it's got the Mark IV controller board. It's got Wi-Fi, okay? It's got Wi-Fi in it. Wi-Fi, straight up, no go. So many places don't allow Wi-Fi. It's an ingress point. Now it doesn't have Wi-Fi because this is a Wi-Fi chip. One screw takes off a cover you pull this out, boom, printer doesn't have Wi-Fi anymore. This is now air gapped. You can outrun this in Department of Defense facilities, 
businesses. If I had a business where it's like, hey, we need to prototype stuff for unreleased product. You bet your ass I am not connecting that thing to any cloud. All, all you know, how many times, you know, commercial, industrial espionage is a huge thing. How many times have you heard where a company invited people over from another company from another country and a couple laptops went missing or somebody logged into the, the network that they don't know who and then three years later, the thing that they were working on is being developed somewhere else and is already for sale. So, and as things get more connected, as things get more connected and as everything gets more intertwined, you gotta look out for that shit. Now, again, does, does, does anyone care if little Timmy who prints Benji's and whatever the dumb meme print of the month is off Thingiverse or Thangs or, or Prusament or whatever? Does that, does, do they care? No, they don't care. Let's be honest, nobody cares, right? The majority of people don't give a crap about network security, but people do, but some people do. And for some people, it is a huge thing. So people, please stop whenever someone brings that up as an issue or a concern don't just go, whatever, who cares? I don't care, you shouldn't care. Please don't. Because for some people, that's a major thing. For some people, that's a major thing. For other people, it's just a valid concern that they have, like me. Am I doing anything here where, you know, if my print history and all the files that I've ever printed get leaked, would I be in trouble? No. Yeah, Galactic Armory might be pissed because, you know, I paid for the models and now some third party took them. Okay, cool. So they got models from Galactic Armory for free. A few other paid models. You know, they might get, you know, oh, I have some unreleased Voron stuff. But for some people, it's a huge, massive security thing that could cost them their jobs and their entire business. So anytime, and I, I'm doing this because I, I visit a few different subgroups for like 3D printing. And every time some an issue like that gets brought up, especially in one certain group, people rush to basically shit on people who bring up that concern. Like they, they, they're like, no, why are you doing this? Why it's, it, it, I swear it's like crypto bros and FUD. It's like, it's like whenever you bring up a downside of crypto and all the crypto bros get all fucking defensive. I swear there are certain 3D printing communities around certain printers that the moment you start calling out any potential issue you may have, they freak out. People like, I don't know. Anyways, we went down a rabbit hole there, but yeah. Avoid the cloud. It's not your computer. It's somebody else's computer. Let's do a giveaway. Also, I know this is non-politics, but I find this absolutely... Ah, oh, dang it. I refreshed Twitter and it's gone. Where is it? Where'd it go? I think Allison tweeted about it. So, I hate politics. I absolutely detest politics. And certain politics I really don't like. But I'm just going to do something here because I'm Canadian. Okay. So... Yesterday, was it yesterday or Saturday? It was, you know, Transgender Awareness Day. It's the same day every year. This year it happened to fall on Easter and people of certain beliefs freaked out, okay? Because, you know, a date that always falls on the 31st of March happened to fall on their, their day. Yo, I'm Canadian. Next year it's on 420. So, um... It's going to be interesting next year because, you know, it's on, you know, the day of the Canadian national crop. So let's see if they freak out that much over that. <laughs> I just found that absolutely hilarious. It's like, yeah, so, so, you know, he's risen and he's getting high. He's getting real high right now. Okay, let's do this wheel of names thing. So. What is 420? It's a it's a it's a day where we celebrate um, um, a, a, um, a, a plant or something. OK, let's do this giveaway. Let's do this giveaway. It's also a really bad guy's birthday, too, but he's gone, thankfully. So, yeah, I, I, I just love uh, politics, frickin politics. Wow, we had a lot of people enter today. Holy dang. You know what? I'm scrolling through the list. The question today was, what is your favorite filament? I'm not seeing it. It's a lot of ABS, ASA, and PLA. 
Ain't nobody love the, the pet cheek. The devil's lettuce. The Canadian national crop. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Missed the giveaway. You had all day to enter. Uh, okay. Uh, I need a number between 4 and 20. Because funny. Five. Brandon put five. Go five. One, two, three, four, five. And we're gonna wait until we get to the top. Because it's gonna be it's gonna be this. It's gonna be it's gonna be the odd person out this time. I know it. I know it. I know it. I know it. I, I believe it in my heart. Heart of the cards. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Go. Oh, oh. Oh, 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 uh, dang it. Dang it. Peter Savas Jr. Congratulations, Peter. One day, one day it will be that person. One day it will be the odd one out. One day it will be the odd person out. So let me come up here. F, V. Yeah, that's an acceptable plastic. I'll take it. So congratulations, Peter. Golf claps in chat for Peter. Okay, um, so we're gonna call it there. Um, again, we got the mechanics all done for that, all the wiring and whatnot, all the lights turned on and no sparks, so we should be good. Um, so either Friday or Saturday, uh, we will uh, we'll do the firmware on it and get it up and printing again. So we're right about there. Uh, so yeah, so that was fun. Again, huge shout out to LDO Motors for providing the Leviathan and the Nighthawk. We've already done a Nighthawk on stream before on um, the, uh, the, the that one, um, but we haven't done a Leviathan yet. And then we're after we get this one up and going, I've got to get V226, which is downstairs. That needs a, um, a rebuild as well, because that has the same issues where the wiring harness is completely shredded. Um, and also that has a very, very, very first production, pre-production uh, Fizek Spider in it, and I don't trust it anymore, um, so that. Do the chaotic lab CNC tap. You know what, Pedro? Maybe I will. I have one. I have one. We'll do that. Does the XOL tool head work with tap? That's actually somebody needs to answer that. Does the XOL tool head work with tap? No idea. Shit. Okay. Because I've got an extruder that I want to use. I got... I put it. I don't know. I've got the extra tool head from the Magneto that I want to put on something. It does? XOS? XOL, yes. Okay, cool. So I'm going to I'm gonna use the... Uh, I want to put an XOL tool head on the V226, but that'll be in a couple... in a week or two. Okay, um, so we're going to call it there. Shout out to Polymaker for the spool of film that we gave away this stream and every stream. Links for them and more in the video description. Also, for anyone who donated to the channel, gifted memberships to others, or became members of the channel yourself, I thank you. I would not be able to do the things I do, create the content I create without your continued support. You make it all possible. Um, so we're gonna call it there. I'm gonna try and do a stream on Twitch either tomorrow or Thursday. So if you're on my Discord, cool. If you're not, join, link in the description. If you own Helldivers 2 um, and you are a member of the Only Benchy Yacht Club, uh, pay attention in the only bet you yacht club channel because i want to do game stuff with the community tomorrow so we'll see um or thursday we'll see depends on the weather and how tomorrow's video goes for editing okay we're calling it there uh be safe out there i hope you enjoyed the weekend hope you enjoyed the holidays yay back to work yeah. um be safe out there wash your hands and i will see you later this week goodbye <laughs>